What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we'll be covering a task three speaking question. So you'll be given a reading passage about an academic topic and then a lecture for you guys to listen very carefully to and to take notes on. Take out your notebooks, grab your writing utensils and get ready to take some outstanding notes. All right, that's the reading passage we'll be looking at today. So the topic is group think. The star symbol over here to the left is for the reading passages information, which in this case is going to be the definition of the topic. Now, the star symbol stands for which and the easiest way to find the definition in the reading passage is to look for the topic word first. So let's look for group think. I see it at the end of the first sentence. One process by which groups may make bad or irrational decisions is known as group think. So group think is known as a process instead of one by which groups may make bad or irrational decisions. I took out the words or irrational because the definition is going to be mentioned at the end of our speaking response. And by that time, you will probably only have about 15 or maybe even 10 seconds left. So when you're taking notes on the definition, don't make it too, too long. If you're able to omit and take out some of the um, synonyms that were mentioned in the definition, please do so because the definition shouldn't be too overwhelming or burdensome for you to say at the end of your speaking response. All right, now that we have the definition organized and if you are familiar with my speaking template, you should by now be able to say your beginning sentence and your ending sentence very well without a single hiccup. So by now, your first and last impressions are gonna be flawless. All right, let's listen to the lecture. So let me tell you about my own experience with this when I was working for a computer company a couple of years ago. So one day a coworker and I suggested we should give our computers a design makeover, make them look more up to date. Market research was showing that new customers said they would be more interested in buying our computers if they looked cooler. Our technology was advanced, but the outside design looked really old fashioned. At first, more than half the group supported us. There were a few senior managers there, though, who didn't support the design change. One of the senior managers said, Our focus has always been on technology. Changing the look is an unnecessary cost. Almost immediately, some of our supporters changed their minds. Even my co-worker changed his mind. When I asked him why after the meeting, he told me he didn't want to make a bad impression on the senior managers. He thought that disagreeing with them might jeopardize his chances of getting a promotion by not looking like a team player. What about me? I hate to admit it, but after a few hours of discussion, I started wondering if it was worth everyone's time to argue about this. As more people sided with senior management, I started to feel like I was the only one holding up the vote. Everyone else seemed to think change wasn't necessary, so I voted against my own idea in the end. So we unanimously decided to stay with the current old looking design. But this decision ended up costing us a lot of money. That same year, our competitor came out with a new design that attracted some of our customers and prevented us from profiting on potential new customers. Explain groupthink and its effects using the example of the computer company. All right, so in this situation, the professor gave us one example, and this example was about his personal experience. So in the beginning sentence, I'm going to say that the professor elaborated on a specific example of himself. If the professor happened to be a woman, a lady, we would say a specific example of herself. So just a small change. All right, now let's see how I put all of these details together. Keep in mind that these conjunctions are incredibly important and that you should be able to use some symbols to make it so that it's easier to keep up with the lecture's pace while also using abbreviated versions of certain words. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a specific example of himself to explain the concept of groupthink. To begin with, when the professor worked at a computer company, he suggested a design makeover because customers are more interested in cooler computers. At first, more than half of the group supported his idea, but one senior manager said that changing the look is unnecessary. As a result, many people changed their minds simply because they didn't want to make a bad impression on the senior managers. 
Needless to say, as more people sided with senior management, even the professor voted against his own idea, which ultimately hurt the company in the end. To sum up, this was a perfect example of groupthink, which is known as a process by which groups may make bad or irrational decisions, given by the professor in the lecture. All right, so TOEFL speaking, speaking in general is quite simple. As long as you know the order of your response and know which statements, which phrases to say as your transitions, everything is gonna be very neatly organized, okay? Now, when it comes to time management, you only have to look at the time once, which is before saying the ending statement. I had about 17 seconds left, so as soon as I looked at the time after I was done summarizing the lecture's information, I knew then and there that I had enough time for the definition. Now, on the other hand, if I saw a number that's closer to 10, so a number that could be rounded down to 10 rather than rounded up to 15, so it would be 12 at, at the most, if I saw a number that's around 12, then I would have skipped the definition like so. So let's see, 12 seconds. To sum up, this was a perfect example of groupthink given by the professor in the lecture. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. All right, so I still have two seconds left and I had to say thank you for your time and consideration, but this is gonna feel so much better than saying a long ending sentence, you know, forcing it in there, and even potentially getting interrupted at the end. Because if that happens, you're gonna be thinking about that terrible mistake that you made at task three, and then maybe hinder your performance for task four. So better safe than sorry. Let's make it so that we don't have any regrets, all right? Okay, that was my sample response. That was the question that I wanted to cover today, but I'm honestly having a deja vu moment because I think I covered this topic in one of my previous videos, but here it is again. Good for review, good for review, okay? If you're given a topic or a question that's very similar or even identical to what you've done before, you should be doing a much better job than other individuals who have not had that previous experience, am I correct? So review, look over the questions that you've solved before in the past so that you don't let that experience go to waste, so that you don't squander that knowledge that you acquired from that previous experience that you put yourself through. All right. If you are a self-disciplined and dedicated person, reach out to me about my tutoring services. If you enjoyed the video, once again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share the content, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.